and had the strength. But he, the man, the man really did very well. I mean, I like his Christmas and gospel music was awesome. Yeah. Very, good. very. Good. That's what he should have been doing. That's what he should have been doing. All right, well, God bless you all. Good to see you. Glad to say that I got my voice back. Praise the Lord. And, and the, uh, the 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 cold that I had has disappeared. So praise the Lord for that. I, uh, I want to thank those of you who called me to make sure I was all right. So thank you very much for that. And I appreciate all of that. I have had a pastor from Devil's Lake call me because uh, somebody told him that I had coronavirus. And, uh, and so, well, I mean, thank God for calling us. You guys can call me on all that. And I said, well, no. I said, no. I'm great. Thank you for calling. I mean, I, I appreciate that. I said, but you know, and, and if I do get it, feel free to call me again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but you no, know, so far, praise the Lord, that, that has not been a problem with me. Um, I just got what we used to know as coal. And you know, praise the Lord, that's that's what we're done with. Because I never like that either. <laughs> Alright, just a few things to talk about. Uh, first of all, a reminder uh, that on uh, Monday, we'll have Bible study at 7 p.m. over at Trinity Berkman, so we'll be doing that. And um, then Tuesday, we have Bible study at Gun Brothers at 2. And we will be having a healing service at Trinity Berkman at 6 30 p.m. on Tuesday. So we're meeting over there. Uh, you're invited to come, um, and, uh, and we'll bring them because Jesus says, Pray for the sick. And they shall recover. By the way, one of the things that I want to I want to invite you to think about is this. All right, because this actually happened last time, and it was amazing what happened. So there are two people who weren't going to come. And you know why they weren't going to come? Because they felt sick. <laughs> and then they said, "Well, I can't go because I'm sick." And then all of a sudden, it's like the Holy Spirit said to them, "Well, hello, is a healing service." <laughs> We're praying for the sick. I mean, if you're healthy, you don't need to come to if you want. You feel free to come and, and praise the Lord and, and give Him the glory. We need you too. But, but yeah, if you're sick, don't let that stop you from showing up. and have to be there so we can pray for you. Okay? Now, what was interesting is when they finally decided on going, two people, all right, two separate individuals living in two separate places. They both showed up and no kidding, as soon as they entered the doors of the church, they got healed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, nobody good. had to pray for them. They just acted in faith as if the Lord's going to meet me and he met them. So it's not always required that we even pray with you. Just come to faith. But we'll invite you to come, and that will be at 6.30. Okay? Um, by the way, I also want to say to some of you young people that that prayer service is not just for old folks. <laughs> we actually had some college kids there this last time, and it was very good. So uh, feel free to come and participate uh, as you as you uh, as you feel led. Wednesday, December sixteenth, we have quilting at nine a.m. Thursday. We have Bible study at Hartland Court No. 3 at 10.45 a.m. Friday, December 18th, we have intercessory prayer at 9.30. And then I want to make you aware of two things. First, on December 21st, we will have Bible study at Trinity Merlin. But on December 24th, which is Christmas Eve, we are going to do two Christmas Eve services. We're going to be here at 5 o'clock. So we will have 5 o'clock Christmas Eve service right here. And then we will have 7.30 over at Trinity Earth. So feel free to come. We'll do it at 5 o'clock right here at Trinity Earth. I'm uh, not at Anglin. And 7.30 uh, over there. I'm going to stop before I mess it up. But anyway, Christmas Eve service right here. 5. So if you want to be here, you're more than welcome to. We'll do candlelight service right here. Okay. All right.
and then that following week, uh, our regular schedule, we won't have that because people are going to be away and doing things like that. So, but we will, nevertheless, uh, up to December 24th, be following the regular, regular schedule. All right. Um, anything else before we start? Yes? I have two announcements. One is that uh, tonight they're going to set up the, the steam engine that's on the counter kind of story a lot. <laughs> the Hill family is uh, putting lights on it and okay. it's going to be lit up. For anybody, in case you're driving by and you wonder what that thing is that's shining, that's okay. what it is. And what time is that? I'm, I'm not positive, like 6.30 maybe. Okay, all right. Um, second thing is, we get so much honey at the farm that I have brought gift bags for anybody that wants them. Oh, okay. They're sitting on the table back here. Wonderful. Everybody should take one and help me out. I'm going to help you. I'm going to take it. Yeah, because because I I, I love honey. Good. I love it because I don't want to use it for do you, do you use it for cooking? No, I just use it on sandwiches. On sandwiches. Oh yeah, it's great that way. I like to use it instead of sugar. Yeah. And it works really good that way too. But <laughs> well, it's good however you use it. Yeah. Or in your tea. In your tea. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, tea is good. Alright, well thank you. Thank you. So honey is out there. Feel free to get some. All right. All right, anything else? All right, if there's nothing else, I invite you to please rise. We're going to sing our first song. It's number 27 in your folder. Number 27.
found in your bowl. And we'll continue our time in the Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse and cross our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. According to God's word in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sin before God and before one another. Thank you. Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. Therefore I come before your throne of grace, that I may receive mercy, and find grace to help in every time of need. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me, so that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. To the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was going to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and he bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, you once called John the Baptist to give witness to the coming of your Son, and to prepare his way. Grant us, your people, the wisdom to see your purpose today, and the openness to hear your will that we may witness to Christ's coming, and so prepare his way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns in you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be The first lesson is from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Beginning the third verse. And the prophet Isaiah writes the following by the Holy Spirit. A voice of Christ. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Oh, wait, 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 wait. By all means, we want people to follow along. So Isaiah chapter 40, starting at verse 3. Isaiah writes the following by the Holy Spirit. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Made straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Here is the reading of the first lesson. Psalm this morning is uh, taken from Psalm 147, it's on page 287 of your reading hymnal. We're going to do verses 7 through 14. I'll take the odds and you can have the evens. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, make music to our God on the heart. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds. And for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. 
But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, and those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem, and praise your God in Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates, he has blessed your children. The second lesson is from the prophet Malachi, the third chapter, verses 1 through 2. And if you're looking at your Bibles to find it, you go to Matthew, turn towards the Old Testament, it's the last book in the Old Testament. So it's Matthew, turn towards the, the left, and you'll, you'll find Malachi.
Metaf o Argo. Libretos. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have gathered us this day to be in the presence of your Son. For he has promised that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is with himself. And so we welcome you, Lord Jesus, we praise and honor and worship you. And as we come before you now, we ask that as the shepherd of the sheep, you would guide us, open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to all that you have for us now. And by your Holy Spirit, help us to apply it. And now, Holy Spirit, we pray that you be our teacher, and that whatever is of sin or temptation, or the flesh or the devil will fall to the ground and die and be of no effect, so that we can receive all that you have for us now. And let the word of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 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 Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of Luke, we find that John the Baptist gives us a couple of different images with regards to Jesus Christ. And today and next week, I want us to consider those images and what they mean. Today, the first thing that he tells us about the Messiah, about Jesus, is this. He says, even now, the axe is at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit, he cuts down and throws into the fire. Jesus is given this image of being an axe at the root of the tree, one who is going to use the axe to cut down at the very roots that which does not produce good fruit. So the question we need to ask is, what does that mean with regards to us and to the world? Well, there are really two important things that we need to see, both of which are relevant to our lives and the life of the world in which we live. The first thing that's being said here is the most obvious, and that is, that Jesus is the eternal judge. He's the one for whom everyone will stand at the last. We read in Hebrews chapter 9 that it is appointed for man once to die, and then comes the judgment. We must all stand before the king, the judge, Jesus Christ, and he will judge us just as thoroughly as he saves. And those who do not produce the right fruits will be cast into eternal torment. But those who bear the right fruit, and what fruits are those? Well, we find that in Galatians chapter 5. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Those who produce the fruits of the Spirit will enter into eternal life. So the first thing that John is making very clear is that every human being on the face of the earth needs to repent. It's time for us to turn away from worldliness and from our own flesh. It's time for us to turn away from worshiping the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I and turn to Jesus. Who will pardon us by the blood of the covenant. Fill us with his Holy Spirit. Bring us into holiness of life. Unite us with the Father. And bring us into eternity. An eternity of blessedness. Rather than an eternity of shame. That's the first thing that John is making clear. Everyone needs to repent. Because Jesus is the one that God has sent to judge. And now is the time of mercy. Now is the time to turn to him. Now is the time to get right through Jesus Christ. 
As a church, that's something that we need to make clear to everyone. Now is the time of salvation. Because the time is coming when he will uproot every tree that does not bear fruit and cast it in the fire. And yet we read in Scripture that it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. You know, ironically, not ironically really, but interestingly, our Lord Jesus makes the same point in Luke 13. In Luke, Luke 13, he tells the parable of the fig tree that has been planted in a vineyard. And the owner of the vineyard looks at the fig tree and says to the gardener, You know what? I've come by this fig tree for, for three years, and it hasn't borne any fruit at all. Cut it down. Watch the waste the soil. But the gardener says, Wait one more year. Let me put manure on it. Care for it. And if it bears fruit, well and good. But if not, then you can cut it down. Jesus makes the statement that right now is the time of mercy, but the time will come where those who do not bear the proper fruit will be cut down. That's a solid thought. Think about the people in your family. Think about the people in our communities who need to start bearing fruit, who need to repent and turn to Him, who need to share the message of salvation and bear testimony to how Jesus has changed us. That's the first piece of this image that we need to take with us. We have a job to do that people might not go to torment but go into eternal life. But now there's a second part of this that I think is equally important for each and every one of us. And it's this. Not only is this image talking about judgment, but it does say something about the ministry of Jesus that we need to be encouraged by and we need to invite them in to act on. And what would that be? Notice that the axe is at the root of the tree. At the root. Not the branch. At the root. What does that indicate? Well, it indicates that our Lord Jesus wants to deal with every human being and he wants to get to the root of the problem in our lives. Would it be fair to say that with every believer, there comes a time where we want to move forward in the things of God. We want to do more. We, 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 we feel this call to be more productive, and yet there's something within us that just keeps us from moving forward. You know what that is? It's a root that needs to come out. It's a root that needs to come out. And I have seen in the healing ministry of our Lord Jesus that people come up with a lot of symptoms. But he's not interested in dealing with symptoms. He's interested in dealing with the root. And when he deals with the root, then the symptoms go away. For example, I remember there was a lady uh, that had fibromyalgia. And actually I found that as the Lord has put me to pray with women, primarily as women, but dealing with women with fibromyalgia, they all have the same general root problem. And you know what that is? Self-injury. They hate themselves. Somebody did something to them when they were little kids. And they were told it's all your fault. It wasn't their fault. It had nothing to do with them. And do the other person. But because that other person was authority, they believed them. I'm a bad girl. I'm terrible. I don't deserve to live. I'm a problem. And they began to voice that internally to themselves. Then their body began to agree with them. 
and it began to cause problems. And when they would come up for prayer, and we would lay hands on them, it was interesting, there was one woman in particular, she came up for something entirely different, and she couldn't hardly raise her arms about this, this high, without terrible pain. And as I was praying, the Holy Spirit showed me when she was five years old. And I described her to herself. She didn't ask me. And I said, well, I said, you're ashamed of yourself. And that's not what God intends for you. And so what I did is I prayed for release for that little girl. That she be healed and set free from that bondage. And this woman, because uh, she was a woman by this time, Mary, her eyes got great big because on her own, her arms all of a sudden went like this. Started lifting up and praising the Lord, and she had no more pain. And the strength returned to her body, and then she grabbed hold of me, and she started saying, Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm the wrong person to thank you, it's the Lord. But anyway, she grabbed hold of me and said, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to prove that all the strength is in her arms, because I'm kind of I'm tall and she was kind of small, so she had all the leverage. <laughs> and she went, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I was like, let me go. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. But the Lord was not interested in dealing only with the symptom of the fibromyalgia. He wanted to heal her. Okay. It went to the root of the problem. For me, when I was, and many of you know this because you've been here a long time, I've been here a long time, but uh, I, for many years, I had a, a problem where I ended up having uh, sinus and chest infections that were getting worse and worse and worse and worse to the point where medicine wasn't doing it. And it was terrible. Every spring. Just, that's what we work with me. And the Lord showed me one day as I brought it to him. I said, I said, you know, I'm at little allergies or something because, because the, 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 the steroids aren't working. Over the counter medication isn't working. I have to, if I can't get any more, uh, uh, I mean, because we're the, even the, um, there wasn't, there wasn't penicillin or CPAP. They're using CPAC. I mean, that wasn't working. It was just terrible. I said, you're going to have to show me what to do because I'm in real trouble here. And I was listening to a, a, a teaching and the Lord showed me that my problem, it wasn't something I was responsible for in a sense, but in my family, my, my, my dad and my mom's son, they were both actively involved in Freemason. And that brought a curse in the family. Because God hates idolatry. And Freemasonry is idolatry. So, you know, the, the problem with being Freemasonry is if you go in and they, they want you to think they're kind of like the elves, but in the end they're not like the elves. Because you have to take the oath on the Bible. And what we declare, basically, is that any old God will work when you have to believe in a God. So what you're saying is that is that the God who saves us is the same as Allah, is the same as Buddha, is the same as Confucius, is the same even if you worship Satan, it's the same as Satan. God hates them. It's not true. There's only one God. There's not three, there's not four, there's not five, one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's it. And I said, well, what do I need to do? Well, I went up, I forgave my ancestors, according to the scripture. I forgave myself, I asked forgiveness for idolatry. And then I laid hold of that great promise that Jesus became a curse to read on the cross that I should receive the blessings of Abraham and the blessings of the Spirit. And I want to share with you right now that when 
the Lord dealt with that root in my life. And he took it out. I haven't had an infection in 12 years. That doesn't mean I don't sniffle during, during the spring, but I can actually sleep during the night. I blow my nose and move on. He deals with the room. And there's a lot of us that there are things that God is speaking to us about. He wants to deal with the roots in our lives. So that we can move forward into the purpose that he has for us on earth. I mean, thank God I was going to heaven whether I got healed or not, because I believed. But do you realize that God has a purpose for us right now? And those roots have to be taken out so that we can walk in that purpose. He's the axe at the root of the tree. What's holding you back? What's holding you back from following him? Well, is it bitterness? Is it rage? Anger? Unforgiveness? Jealousy? Covetousness? What is it? Whatever it is, we need to invite him to him so that he can deal with the root of our problem. Because it's only when we're free from that root that we can properly bear the fruit. The fruit that he wants us to bear. And by the way, it's only when we're free from that root and then we can share with other people how they can get free. I remember uh, we had a funeral here and after the funeral I was outside there's just Gene Rosinski and the funeral director and Gene asked me how I was doing I shared you know, how the Lord set me free through delivering me from Freemasonry. I did not know that Gene was a Freemason. I didn't know that. But he heard the testimony and he said, what do I have to do? I said, well, just run out to him and turn to the Lord. Then now I've never talked to him. The Lord's done a tremendous work in his life. It set me free from my own things. We receive so we can pour out to others and help them receive. That's what we're here for. So understand then that the image of Jesus as the axe at the root of the tree not only speaks of eternal judgment for those who will not repent, but it also speaks of something he wants to do in each one of us, and that is take out the roots of whatever's getting in the way of our truly bearing fruit from Christ and moving forward into the ministry God has for each one of us. Invite him. Ask him. What is this that's keeping me from moving forward? Is it fear? Lord, tear it out. Is it materialism? Tear it out. I don't want it. And if you truly don't want it, then he will truly take it out. And he's the only one, by the way, that can do it now. He does it far better than any psychologist can ever do. So ask. Let him move. Let him tear that wood out. And then we will bear the fruit that people will taste and see the Lord is good. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you that you sent your son to break out the roots that have kept us from moving forward. Lord, you know each one of our hearts. Whatever in us is not right, whatever in us is keeping us from moving forward in the things of God, we don't want it. And yet, really, Lord, there are a lot of things we don't know about. We, we, we don't know what that is, but you do. We ask that by your Holy Spirit you speak to us. Show us what it is. And as we invite you, we're going to come and take those roots out so that we can bear the proper fruit of the kingdom. So that people may taste and see that the Lord is good as we 
pour out into other people's lives, free from the roots that keep us from moving forward. And we ask this in Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to sing uh, Come Down Path, and that's uh, it's 499. Oh, 
one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. And in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. When the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all people of God and Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, it is your will that all people should come to you through your Son, Jesus. Stir up your Holy Spirit within your church that we may have thought, word, and deed, reveal the good news of Jesus Christ, and bring that into saving faith. Lord, we pray especially for our churches in this country and around the world who are facing persecution because of the name of Jesus. We pray that you would grant us the grace to preach your word with power. While you lift up your hand to heal with miracles, wonders, and signs of heaven. And that the persecution of your church may lead many to salvation in the name of Jesus. Lord, be your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, you have commanded us to pray for our nation and to pray for our government. And so now, Lord, we just pray your salvation and your wisdom and understanding, counsel and light, knowledge of the fear of the Lord on our president, the vice president, the Senate, the House, the Supreme Court, our governor, state legislatures, state, local, and federal officials and judges. Where they're right, sustain them. Where they're wrong, grant them the grace to see they're wrong, to turn to you, to reject every evil thing, and to enact policies that are pleasing in your sight and for the furtherance of your kingdom. Raise up righteous men and women who would rule not according to the flesh, but according to your spirit. We pray, Lord, that in our governing authority you would bring a great awakening. Lord, that those who do not know you would come to know you. And that those who walk the way would return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, you've commanded us to pray for the people of Israel, for the righteousness and peace of Jerusalem. Let now be the time when they recognize you, the one they pierced. More over you is for an only son. And are cleansed by your blood, filled with your spirit, and joined in your church as the one you met. And Lord, I pray that you would raise up your church in Israel, that they would preach your word with power. While you act in power to confirm your word through miracles, wonders, and signs, and that the Jewish people would cry out, Blessed is he, Jesus of Nazareth, who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. And Father, thank you that through your Son, you have purchased perfect healing for the people. Lord, we ask now that you would act to bring healing to the lives of Eric Fetter, Inez Klein, Mohini Yoda, Raja Robles, Doug Sari, Darla Dahmer, Rose Winkler, Linda Winkler, Ben Hennessy, Keen Hansen, Cooper Parks, Brian Helgen, Jeremiah Slaw, Judy Matheson, and Jim Dresker. We bring our military personnel, Rosie Meese, David Furr, Sandy Meese, Riley Legacy, and Harvey Hanklin. And we pray, Lord, your salvation and your grace and in the lives of all those we mention now, either out loud or in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Yes. We pray for our brothers and sisters at Gilgit, Andrea Sandstreet, our brothers and sisters in Nicaragua for every need for them. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
Lord, I want to pray for a, one of our, uh, a young girl in Nicaragua, kneeling uh, Chavarria. I just pray for her and I come against that spirit of epilepsy that has given her a lot of trouble here, Lord Jesus. We come against those evil ones, bind them, send away the ball and us, and I pray for good speech, hearing, vision, and eyesight, memory, and mind for her, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we also uh, pray your healing hand on the healed house. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all of them who pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Peace of the Lord be with you all. <coughs> also with you. You may be seated, and we'll receive you all.
freedom and the blood of Christ shed.
Thank you.